Hey folks, today I want to show you a do-it-yourself project, um, building a floodlight inside a vehicle. So the floodlight goes through the windshield. Uh, so of course you can buy floodlights that you mount on top of the vehicle, like a SUV or a Jeep, and then that gives you, that is the best solution with the most light output. However, I wanted a smaller light, a floodlight, and a floodlight that actually gives you warm white light. And that is an option that is very hard to find, so I had to build it myself. So the first thing that you need is, of course, the LED. Here we have a, a COP LED, chip on board LED, that uh, works with a 12 volt system and uh, pulls 10 watts so that is fine for a car's electric system it doesn't pull too much 10 watts are as much as two w5w light bulbs and you have a lot of these working in the vehicle so the vehicle's electric system should be able to handle this floodlight now i took the cop light strip and put it on a piece of aluminum and uh, which acts as a heat sink you need a heat sink with this thing and then i also took some sheet metal let me show you from an old lamp so this very thin metal reflective metal to actually shape the beam a little bit otherwise you would blind yourself now you should not turn on this floodlight while you're driving and the police wouldn't be too happy about it so okay what else do we need this is already fitted to my car you can build that any old way as long as you have enough heatsink surface so i have a switch here a switch that i will install in the center console it's like a four dollar item i have um some things that you where you can steal electric current or electric power from other system you just clip it in then you save yourself the hassle of soldering in the car. And here, you also need to have some heatsink compound, but that's already handled, of course. It's between the aluminum sheet metal and the cop LED. So this should be enough. I need a drill and, and some tools. I already have the cable soldered to the, to the LED. I already did a test run with the LED. It shouldn't get too hot, although you never know, right? <laughs> Hooking it to the car battery can have different effects. So anyway, so it's all about improvising and we will see what happens. I don't know. Will this project be a success? Will it burn down my vehicle? We shall see. So I hope I got all the tools and gear ready that I need to install the light. The light will go right here on the inside so my internal floodlight so let's clean the windshield a little bit on the inside and then uh, install the light itself before we connect it to the power system I designed the light so this will be easy cheesy take the light like this and put it right underneath here We get outside. Just in case you wondered, this is a Nissan Qashqai, um, the G10 version of the 2008 vehicles. It's an older vehicle, but it's it's a nice vehicle. I like it. I had to get it because I destroyed my Toyota Prius on the highway. Crash it against a truck. Now the Prius protected me very well, but it, it was totaled because the drive shaft was destroyed, the engine was done. But man, I, I really love the Toyota Prius. But the Nissan Qashqai is an okay car as well. I'm just playing hide the cable. And there are plenty of spots to hide the cable, it's really not a problem. It just takes a little bit of patience. Not that I have a lot of patience, but that should be fine. So we need to get the cable to the, the way over here to the center console where we'll install the switch. 
and we take the power from here, so from the secret lighter. Oh, slowly but surely we're heading in on the center console. Still trying to hide the electrical cords. So now that the cable is somehow hidden, we remove the lower part of the center console. Just works like this. And the cash guy. Needs a little bit more help. Alrighty. And a little bit more. Okay, there you go. It's probably a cable back there. Yep. Let's see, we just unplug these cables. Okay, so this is the cigarette lighter cable, and the green is the plus, and black is the minus. And that's all we need to know for right now. So I've got my brand new CBB knife here. Um, we take off the insulation in this area. Well, that was actually not even necessary. Just open, open the cover like this. So we have the blank cables now, and then we have these special connectors. Let's see these ones, clamping connectors. That's what they're called. Let's clamp, clamp and connect. They're the good ones, they're red expensive, four to five euros or something like five dollars. A bit extensive. The way these work is put the cable inside and then there is like a little blade that cuts inside and, and then you have a, a connection. But first we need uh, another short piece of cable that goes to the switch. So there we have the short piece of cable. This will go to the switch. So we have the clamping connector here, again green was plus, so that goes inside the, sorry a bit off center here, okay that goes inside the clamp, number one, And then the second cable goes inside the clamp as well. Already. So now all we have to do is to close the clamp. And for this, we actually use. Multi tool. So, clamp is closed. Now we should have electrical current on this one. Not 100% sure. Never used one of these clamps before. To me, this is the way it should work. Next we have the switch. So I think I want uh, one like this. Well before we install the switch, drill holes or anything like that, we actually see whether the system works or whether I made any mistakes. So we connect we connect this cable right here. Now I could solder that, that would probably be the best way. But, and I even have a battery operated soldering iron in the car, but for right now, I won't do that. I just want to 
just connect it this way. See, wrap the wire around. So, on the other end. The other end will connect right here. Now, if only I still knew which is plus and which is minus. Ho, ho. But we'll figure that out quickly. 50-50 chance that it works. Yep, yeah, it works. So the light works. Let me see about the switch operation. Yep, yeah, switch works too. So now I can't actually finish the installation up. Some more clamping. Second clamp and the minus cable so it goes inside. Oop. And we close that baby up. So, since I lack the finger strength or fine motoric skills, I take my tool. So, already the connection is there. So again, we steal the power right here. This is the connector that goes to the secret lighter port. That now is a double USB port. In between, there is the switch. And you see the way I connected it? That is not permanent because uh, that would be a little bit dangerous. So we'll do something with, with electrical tape or so afterwards. I could solder it, but I don't feel like it right now. Usually it works fine without soldering. Okay, now we need to drill a hole in the console and actually see how we position the switch. some carving out to actually install the switch in this area. It didn't do a quite perfect job. But I should have used a Dremel, but I didn't have one at hand. So now let's wire it up and install it. See whether everything actually works before we finish that up. Okay, let's start the vehicle. some mistake it doesn't work so I'm unable to get the clamp to work here the clamp was the problem this is somehow very resilient cable I don't know so we do it the classic way which is uh, which is solder it so you might be able to save five bucks on those clamps they're not really worth it
Hey girl, how do you like the light?